Yeah, welcome back to the firehouse. For some more firehouse reasoning. <coughs> Tonight in the firehouse, I think I'll be um, examining some of the gods. You hear what I say? Some of the gods. I mean, as far as I know, there is only one god still, but there seems to be a number of gods. Even when I myself um, read about God, I hear about God. Um, for example, the Christian God is saying, um, let us make man. So I want to know um, when he's saying, let us make man, exactly who he is. Or who his friends are. If there were some other gods with him, for him to be saying, let us make man. And I don't know a lot about the Quran, but the few bits that I've read, God is addressing um, as we. And of course, to me, we imply more than one. So again, we'd like to ask that um, God exactly who he's talking to when he's saying, We. And not only that as well, there is, there is um, God who seems to send, um, like I say, his son, that God that sent his son to die for the rest of uh, mankind, that God is going to come on the trial as well. And, um, and the God that is jealous and the God that is telling people that they shouldn't uh, worship any other God but um, Him. These gods seem as if they, um, they have a lot of partners. These gods that are always saying... Um, none of these gods seem to say I. Which would imply a singularity, but they speak in terms of we and let us. Let us make man. But what I'm, um, what I'm saying in the firehouse here now, there is only one God. Yeah. And this one God now cannot send um, any prophets, any son, any saints, can send no one here. So I'm saying in the firehouse now that any God outside of this God is a false God. You know what I mean? False God. There is no God that um, send any, like I say, prophets or angels. These ramblings, like I say, are the, um, these are the gods of the um, religious man. You know, he, he, his God is always um, sending and saying things and sending angels. Well, in this fire, we are burning up um, that God and declaring such a God to be a false God. Understand? God cannot send anything and God cannot do anything for you that God has not already done for you which is to, uh, once you've manifested here, God has done what God needs to do for you. The rest is up to you to make a choice. The choice being, like I've said before, between um, positive and negative. Now, instead of you making this choice and doing what you know is right, you are now um, relying, not on what you know is right, but on what the religious man tell you, that his God, I call it his God, must be a personal God. Because um, those gods, or that God, I don't know which one of them, I get mixed up with their God. Because their God behave in, in, in a in such an uh, erratic manner that I can't even find a word to describe 
how such a God would behave. You know, like, um, if, I was a, if I was that God, when I send my son here, the whole world would know about it. But this God only sent his prophets to uh, a certain location, if you know what I mean. Having a, a, and this God is also favoring, like I say, the Duke. Uh, this God tell them that um, he chose them to be his people, to um, rule over the rest of human beings because they are better. So those kind of God, um, like I say, are... You find those, that, that, those kind of God, like I say, when, they, when, when he send a prophet, it's only a particular group of people, no? Chiefly the, uh, the Jew, the Christian, and the Muslim. Of all the prophets that send on the planet, I, I'm sure that they have all of them, or most of them. And that when, they, when this prophet was around, the rest of us never knew. We actually knew about it. Maybe long after they die and, you know, these um, evangelists coming, spreading the news that the prophet was here. Either the third one or the last one. Or don't know how many of them come without anyone at all recognizing these beings apart from these three groups of individuals. But like I said before, and I will repeat it again. The first amongst this individual is the, uh, the Jew man. He is the one that write the original story and he is the one that uh, God chose from amongst human beings to be his people. What I'm saying now, that uh, the Jew man is a liar and this God that chose him, uh, this God don't exist. He must have made up this lie as well. You know what I mean? Because um, there is no way um, any such thing could go on, like the Jew man is saying. So all of his, whatever he says is a lie. That means the whole of his, whatever is from Abraham to Jacob to David to uh, Solomon, all his... Um, Revelation is a goddamn lie. Now, if his revelation is a lie, so is the Christian because he's holding on to what the Jew man says. And so is you, Mr. Muslim man. You should, if, you, if your thing was an original thing, it should have nothing at all to do with what the Jew man is saying. But obviously, you believe in these same prophets that the Jew man is talking about and the Christian. And both of them, I wouldn't say both of them, forget about both of them. He's lying. <laughs> so, and you base your story on his lie. So you are in this lie together. And the whole of you, like I say, I'm willing to bet my soul against the whole lot of you and the God that uh, reveal all those prophets to you as well. You know? I declare such a God to be um, off his head. <laughs> a sicko God. That's not the real God. The real, the, 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 the real God is not taking part in any choices. The real God leaves choices to human beings simply because he was the one or uh, she. <laughs> no. I know like I have to keep repeating. It's just a habit of speaking when I'm describing God as He. Prefer to think of um, God as an energy. See what I mean? Think of um, God as love. You know, you can't really say love was this or that, can you? You know what I mean? So you can't say it's a man or a woman, love, can you? Love is love. God is God. Ain't a man or ain't, ain't a woman. And that is the only God. Any God outside of that is a false God. Now that God given to human being a choice. Once you are here, you are here to choose between positive and negative. Or to understand them, balance them and produce a light so that you can see and understand. 
Ain't no way no God can come and reveal anything to you or send anything to you. Only way God is revealing anything at all to you is when you do the work. Just like I say, if you train your body, you will get fit. If you train your mind, your mind will get fit so you can understand. God teaches those who train the mind. Like I'm saying, and these are the lunatics as well. They are the ones, like I say, um, having God sending somebody here. Obviously, their God is not within this creation. Uh, it's not in earth anyway. <laughs> I say, your God is up in heaven. I think really, you know, like I am, I should have a telephone number to this God. Because it's modern time now. If I want to ask him any question, I will have to um, give him a dial, the hotline to God. We should have a hotline to God. That God that he's talking about. Because cause that God is not here, like I've repeated previously. He's got to send a messenger. You know what I mean? Angel. Like the one Gabriel, the one who visited the Jew. It was the Jew who first, that Gabriel first um, visited. Obviously it was him who first um, come up with this story. Like how they write Harry Potter. And then this one now visit the Jew, visit the Christian and also the Muslim. Because obviously like I said, their God is not present. So if, if this God now who is not present in his creation wanted to communicate anything to human being, he have to send it via his angel. I like this lunatic, these lunatics like to say, to his prophets. But I say that's a long process because the prophets now have to come through, through the, the normal life like us, birth passage. Grow up and um, I said, I don't know, sometimes these prophets might have forgot what God tell them by the time they grow, they go through all the um, upheaval of life that all human have to go through. So it would have been better then if God want to get a message urgently to us to send um, an angel. Because it seems to me when I hear about angel, they are not physical human beings, they are from... They are from heaven, different dimension. So they wouldn't have to go through the process of um, having a mother and a father. You know what I mean? Take all that time to deliver. They just fly in and deliver the message. So I would use the angels all the time and forget about these um, prophets. I don't know what these people prophesy anyway that, that God said. All the prophesy that they've prophesied and um, his son has come and they sacrifice his son and he's send the last prophet. But it makes no difference to the behavior of these lunatics. They know this God so well and this God send them out. They, like I say, the um, angels and the prophets and, and still, they, they, um, they, they learn nothing of this God. And their behavior on the planet has become more vile and uh, erratic. They have not, um, they have um, gone backwards, I say. After all this the, um, revelation that the God that is up in heaven has uh, sent to them. But this God up in heaven, like I say, is the... Um, that God is, um, is, the, um, is a God of the um, thinking of um, beings who have lost their soul. So because they've lost their soul and has got a grip on rationality, I say, they are the one now who place God outside of creation. You see what I mean? So in their own um, idiotic, idiotic imagination now, God is not here. So it's a scenario like um, when the cat is away, the mouse will play. <laughs> so, kind of believe, well, okay, God is not here then. So we can carry on our kind of atrocity, isn't it? As if um, this God will, will uh, the imaginary God anyway, he might miss some of what they're doing. 
Because he's up in heaven. <coughs> but trust me, before God and the universe and man, it's only lunar. It's, this is when you, you haven't got no um, sense of uh, rationality or reason about you. Why you should be believe? Well, you couldn't know that God is up in heaven. You would have to believe it. And believers, like I say, are complete lunatics. I, I, I don't classify believers as having one ounce of spirituality yet. You know, believers are irrational people. So they are the one who is believing that this, this God, which is not real, is up in heaven. But there is no God is up in heaven. Because these lunatics that are telling you that God is up in heaven have no idea what God is or what we mean when we use the word God. If you know what I mean. Because God is only a word. But like I said before, we use word to describe something which is not the word. You know what I mean? Like you say cup. Cup is a word, but you, when you go and see a cup, it's different from cup, isn't it? It's a different object. So the word God is just describing. And what is describing is a higher state then. And this higher state, like I say, it's not up in heaven. It's within all human beings. Better for you to uh, call it your conscience then. If you don't, um, if you don't know exactly what it is, it would be suffice for those who don't know exactly what this is to call it their conscience. And um, because you all have a conscience, you can get a sense of what um, this conscience is within human beings. You see, if you are sensitive to your conscience, you know that when you do a wrong, well, are you going to be happy if you was a liar? <laughs> no, your conscience will not let, let you rest, as they say, because the conscience do not deal in such matters. Now, is this conscience uh, a male? Or is it a female? Or is this conscience dwelling within both male and female? Check it out. I will um, tell you that, it, well, you know this yourself, it's dwelling within both male and female, but it's neither male nor female. See what I mean? So, I and I Rastafari, I know God, but not know, I don't know no God up in heaven. The God that is up in heaven, I say, I kill that God. I am here to destroy such a God, because I am not afraid of such a God. Because any God who sent anyone here, like I'm telling you, is great. Well, it's against the law, isn't it? How could God go against the law? It is against the law, right? For God to give me a choice and then tell me what to do. Or to send anyone and tell me what to do. I'm not stupid. God must leave me to make my choice. And God knows this. So if God know how the game is played, why would he want to interfere in the game by telling me what to do and when to do it? How to pray and all this. What sense does it make? Telling me thou shall not steal, thou shall not covet thy neighbor, thou shall not do this. No, no, that's a mad God I say. The choice is already in front of me. Whether I should... Um, Live like a, a strive to live good, I just live wicked. It's as simple as that. We make the choice. The choice is in front of us. So if the choice is in front of us now, naturally, and we are making this choice, we, if we make the correct choice, like I'm saying, then we are going to get to understand who the one is, who the real God is. Because the real God now is not outside of creation, but is within creation. And uh, you are part of creation. So yeah, that one is within. Not anywhere up in heaven. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't need to send any son. Because Jesus Christ, you know. 
The, the God that sent that son, like I say, in this fire, will burn that. Burn his son and burn him as well. You see what I mean? Because that is a false God. But obviously you can burn that confidently. Because that conception, like I'm telling you, confidently, was um, taught of by beings who are wicked and evil and deceptive. They did that to um, rule and control. And to uh, uh, what I would call uh, put people in a box, you know what I mean? If you have the time to really um, check this out, you, you can see plain and straight. It's a historical fact, not even a spiritual one. That um, Jesus, uh, the idea of Jesus was introduced at the Council of Nicaea in. 325 AD, I think they say it was. You can check that on your computer. When Constantine gathered a lot of what they call bishop or churchman, that, that don't know who they was. And they sit in some place for a, for a while, maybe about three months. And that's when they decided that uh, they would um, come up with this idea that this man, which don't exist, because the man don't exist, is it? But well, anyway, they create this Jesus and claim that he was born. The whole story was conceived then. But because most human beings, I say, are cowards, and even in the time when they can, like I say, research these things, if their heart was really wanted to know what was right, they don't want to do it. They would rather sit down in the church and, and let the preach, the preacher tell them a lot of lies and stupidity and they gobble it up. You can see it happening here now, like I say in all my, most of my video that I made. Just go on your God channel and look at the amount of people listening to these idiotic beings talking a load of bullshit just to make money. Which is what it was conceived of in the first place to do. By Constantine took its away of um, controlling power. And that's why you'll always find, no matter what is going on, the religious man endorses the political man and whatever he's doing, whether it's a war, whether they're getting married, and, and, the, and the political man can be seen to be a clear evil, wicked man. So why would the religious man, who is supposed to be um, the... the um, the good side of man then are representing the godly part of man. Support um, a system that is against the will of God. You see, the religious man should be speaking out. You know, if I say Saudi Arabia, you see any of the imam down there um, speaking out that the king is a devil, even though he is. But they can't, they have to go along because they're afraid the king might put them in prison. So they are in. The, whose pocket are they in then? The kings are God. No, they are in the pockets of men. These ungodly um, religious goons, like I say, who's received their last profit and first profit and X amount of profit that God keeps sending to them, but don't send to anybody else. You know what I mean? I would like to question God myself. As a, as a descendant of slave and say, listen, brethren, as far as I know, in my little bit of knowledge that I've gathered up, we've been under separation a long time and go through enough tribulation and you couldn't send us one or two of these prophets, you know what I mean, to do something, part of sea or something under our separation and distress. You know? No, while we are suffering, they are telling me you now that um, God sent them profit. Well, it's us who is so look like this God must be blind. And obviously such a God is blind. And uh, favors some people. I say, I say to me personally, that God is a racist, man. Your God is a racist, I say. You know? Prejudice and, you know? The first that, uh, like I say, the Chinese don't seem to know about your God. Because he never, had, you know, it don't seem like he deal with them or tell them anything. It just seems like 
those Indian in America and go all over the place. No, nothing about your God. And tell them your, your um, recruiters go there spreading what you call the good news. Because you control the printing press and you can, you can print a lot of uh, propaganda and spread it all over the place. And so yeah, after centuries and centuries now, this lie get infused until you know you come and hurt you now and these idiots just like I say building up temples and mosque and church and all this thing going in there saying it is the house of God. It is not the house of God, it's the house of devils. Like I say, this is fire time. This is a time when, like I say, you are either with us or against us. So it's a time when each soul have to stand and declare where you standing, who are you, who are you standing for, who is your God. You know what I mean? Examine this God that they're telling you about and that you're praying to. And like I said, be careful you're not praying to, to a false God, a God that don't even exist. Because if you receive your God teachings from these devils, like I say, that have set up... Um, monstrosity on the planet and go in their monstrosity to pray and then after when they finish all these prayers they come out and carry on the wickedness that has contaminated up the souls of men you know what I mean these men are responsible you know? man must suffer for what they do man should suffer I should suffer for what I'm saying right if, if what I'm saying is not right and correct I should be punished as a soul to sit knowing in my heart that what I'm not saying is right and correct eh? and truthful and yet I am saying that so that other human being can hear it. I should be punished for that. Because that would be a that's, a, that's deceiving human being for no reason at all. So are you religious man? Like I say, I know a lot of you. Oh yeah, you might believe in what you're saying. Yeah. But believing is not knowing, is it? So yeah, you, you, you are preaching belief to people fervently. What you believe, what you've been told, what you've been convinced to believe. But do you know any of what you are so fervently preaching to people? Because if you don't, you are going to pay for that as well. Because you should have made sure you know from your heart or your mind and your soul, you see what I mean? That you are correct in what you are willing to let come out of your mouth to other human beings. You should have known for certain that yes man, Jesus is God's son. <laughs> and guess what? I know you can't know anything like that. You can only believe that. Any story that's a lie can't be known, it only has to be believed. So anything that you find yourself have to believe in, it's a goddamn lie. You see what I mean? You need to know God, and God is current in it. So you don't need to know anything about um, Jesus. And what. Jesus is not God. Ah, the prophets, they're not God, are they? We are here to know and understand God, not them. So we don't need to know anything about anything that happened uh, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 years ago really to understand what is right and correct. Because what is right and correct is with us. We just need to understand that. To understand what is right. You know what I mean? We don't need to listen to what any, uh, any prophets, uh, any saints say. Because prophets and saints are not God. They are not the energy. That is everywhere present at once. So what made them so important? And yet, like I say, here you are now, you have these lunatics going in buildings, repeating these people's name every day, and yeah, yeah, because they want to keep people's mind in ignorance. How can your mind be free? These people are promising you heaven. For a start, they're telling you that um, God is up in heaven. Which don't exist, it's a lie anyway. Fancy of their own idiotic imagination. They say God is up in heaven and Jesus. No heaven is up there where God is. God is right here. But they are promising you heaven. And you are going in their building, singing and praying and wishing and hoping, 
with that desire in your heart to go to this heaven that don't exist. You see what I mean? You fervently, you let these lunatics, imagine, God never write a book and give it to you. But God create a mind and give it to you then and put conscience in you, all that God has done. Never, never write any um, religious book and give it to you. You let these idiots, like I call them, book fools, write book and then tell you that this is the word of God. The word of God cannot be contained in a book. Because there's millions of people on this planet who cannot read. And God is not a fool. God knew this from creation. That some people won't be able to read anyway. Whether in this time, that time. Or... So what God did was put the truth in them. You know, in themselves. Not in a book. Books are for um, deceivers and people who are covered with it themselves. People who don't really want to know. And the reason why they don't really want to know, like I said, they don't want to live morally correct, do they? They, have, they, they, they can't, uh, they, they don't find it in their heart to live. And because you're not living morally correct, you cannot know. And if you don't know, you have to resort to believing. Because there's only two ways in this world. Isn't it? You either know or you don't know. And when you don't know, you either a believer or you don't believe nothing. <laughs> It was dear, what you on that side. You see what I mean? So all these religious people are what I call believers. And believers don't know. So they are believing in God for sure. Yeah, you believing in God firmly, but you don't know God. Because if you did, you wouldn't have to believe in God. You just act godly, wouldn't you? What's the point of believing in God? You know God and you act godly. You demonstrate the godly attributes that you know from this God that you're claiming that you know. You don't go um, creating um, when a man knows the truth. A man knows that the truth requires no ritual. So why would he now start to um, have some ritual going and lighting some candles? And no, those are for lunatics. This is when um, the soul lost its mind. You do those things. The truth is for living. When you know it, you live by it. You don't go and make rituals. I don't know what... You can make rituals, but don't make none for the truth. Make it for whatever else uh, magic you perform in or whatever you do it. But you cannot make a ritual for what is right and correct. The only ritual there is to make is to live it. You understand? When I mean living it now, you live honestly, as best as you can. You know what I mean? Without hating the next being, without intending to rob them or whatever. Or if they rob you, don't hate them for robbing you then, if you know what I mean. Whatever it is that is going to happen to you, which there is a lot of things going to happen to you, because life is a test in it. Withstand it without hating anyone. Accept it. Eh? Without a bitterness in the heart or a hate for um, those who you think of um, do you the wrong. Like I'm saying, as long as they don't slap you in your face, because you know, if a man slap me, I have to defend myself in it, Rasta. But if, if somebody rob me, oh, that's a different thing. I don't have to hate them or kill them. I feel you there with a woman and she leave you. You don't have to hate them, innit? and wish them bad things. You know, you just accept, accept everything that happened to you. You know, like I say, if it's a physical thing, defend yourself. But if people rob you or if they're jealous or, you know, you have to accept these things and don't hate people. Well, obviously a spiritual man would like to say can accept all these things. Because when you, when you are um, spiritual, you are awake and your eyes are open. So if anyone blind run into you, it's no problem. Accidental, due to blindness. So uh, it doesn't matter what a human being do to me. Any human at all. If you do me any wrong, you know that you do this wrong because your eyes are not open and you are ignorant. 
Because only ignorant being would do another being any harm or would have any intention of doing any such thing. You see what I mean? So all those, it doesn't matter. It could be, it could be my mother, could be my father, could be my own kids. Because anyone can be in darkness. You see what I mean? But anyone now who do me anything, I'm not going to hold a grudge. Like I tell you before, I don't like weeds growing in my garden. <laughs> and that's what I grudge would represent. A weed in the garden of fire and I. So yeah, I try to keep the garden clean and don't let any um, weed settle, take root. You know what I mean? Prefer a bit of anger come in, you know? Yeah, you can get angry. But that soon blow over, that's different. It doesn't, anger don't take root, you know what I mean? It just rush in and rush out. You know? But coming back to our main story here about these um, different, different gods. You know? These things need to be um, examined carefully when people are telling you about God and, and, and asking you to believe in God as well. Because most people say, oh, do you believe in God? When anyone asks me if I believe in God, I always say, no, I'm not a believer in God. I know God. Because to me, believers in God are not as complete lunatic. That's why you believe in God, isn't it? How, why should you believe in something that you can know? To me, that is ridiculous anyway. You know? I can get to know you, but I don't want to know you. I want to believe in you. It's not logical. So I'm saying to all these believers, listen to these believers. You are not supposed to believe. We are not in the, in the world to believe things, whether spiritual or physical. We are here to know something. Is it not better to know the thing than to believe in the thing? Because obviously, you know, when you know the thing, like when I say cup, rather than a man believing cup, it would be better if he get to know the object cup. Now, when he gets to know the cup, he can know the uses of it. What use is it? Because everything has a use in it. You can use it for a good purpose, designing whatever purpose. But it has a use. You see what I mean? But you are not going to find out this use if you just believe in the thing in it. You just believe in the cup. But you never yet go and examine a cup and have a look. Then you will never know that cup can contain water or whatever other thing you can use a cup for. So it's the same thing. If God was a cup, yeah, you human beings now, rather than know the cup and find out that you can drink water out of it, you don't want to do that. You would rather believe. You know? The cup, believe that there is a cup. And then when you believe it, no, you don't know what it's for. So you have to guess and presume. You see what I mean? But you are supposed to know the cup. So it's the same thing. You're not here to believe in God. Because when you believe something, you don't know it. And anything you say about what then will be able to say, like I say, a load of nonsense coming out of my, my idiotic mind. Because you are not supposed to be believing in any God. You are supposed to know God. Then when you know God, you, are, you will know what you can use God for. Or what use God, God is to you. <laughs> if you know what I mean. But you have to know God first. You understand? You can't be um, believing and um, praying and doing any other as I I'll advise you then. You can't do anything that really just people are doing. If you want to know God. Because they are believers. In firehouse I and I burn believers. When I say burn you know, don't burn you with fire. Don't just keep that. <laughs> 
I just mean a bury you with the words. So I just dismiss you as idiots. Lunatics. Those who refuse, like I say, to self-discipline. You see what I mean? Those who refuse to live by the law. Well, they can't live by it because they don't know it. Because they are believers. Believers cannot know the law. And when you don't know the law, you have to be living against the law. And this is what I say. When one is living against the law, this is what breeds these lunatic now believers. Cause they, because they, they, they um, last way down there in their um, negativity with uh, what they're wallowing in like pigs. Yeah? Because they last down there in it. This is where they create you now the, um, the outward form of religion. And, and um, like I say, all these um, who are at the head of these deceptive organizations and godly organizations. These are the ones now that promote the believing God, our God's son and God angel and God and whatever. Using such a thing now, like I say, to deceive, to make money and to um, satisfy their lust for perverted power and whatever other perversion that these lunatic be believers get out of believing nonsense. You know what I mean? And because they, they, because these lunatics are powerful as well, and like I say, control printing, press, whatever, they can spread their propaganda all over the place. And this is how cults are created. So yes, all you religion are cults. The only thing is that uh, because you're bigger than these other smaller cults, you call them cult. But the cults, uh, you are running up the same principle as a cult. You see what I mean? It's a place to interrupt people's mind by telling them what doesn't go like that, what cannot go like that. But get them faithfully to believe in that. So yes, you can get a man faithfully to say, oh yes, Muhammad was the last prophet, as an example. Yeah? Because, yeah, you believe that God is up in heaven under such things and God sent him. And, and then no, none of us can telephone up God again because the last messenger already come. So I don't know how we can, what is the point of God then if we cannot deal, if he already said what he's got to say. But that is that God. The God that I know don't send anybody here and is always available for fresh lyrics. <laughs> Current! You know what I mean? I like those God when they say we only have to believe what they say 2,000 years ago or two and a half. Don't know when. This God that I know is a current God that is in that time, this time and every time. And all you have to do to know this God is to self-discipline. To live with a desire to know what is right and truthful. And this is honesty is a key that open our doors. And when you are desiring these desires and living that way honestly, this is how you, your eyes open. This is how you come to know the one which is real. Not the false God out there that they are writing in the Quran and the Bible about. They don't, and even you readers of your Bible and Quran, oh yeah, I tell you this other paradox now. The truth is contained within your Bible and your Quran, but you don't, you can't know it. Even if you read it a million times, you will never see it. You see, because your heart is not clean enough. Your mind is not clean. You can only understand eh, what you call scriptures when the mind is clean. When the intention is pure and clean, you understand? The light of your conscience will guide you through it then. Because to, to um, go in those dark books, like I say, you need a light to open it up. Reading won't allow you to understand it. Just because you can read <laughs> won't allow you to understand it. You know what I mean? God's got that angle covered. 
So all you um, who think just because you can read your Bible and you go to this college and that you know any, any um, you know the truth of the matter, you don't. Because it makes you more stupid anyway, because you're relying on a book. So you can't even understand the book. A man who is not relying on the book understands the book more than the man who is relying on the book. You don't understand. Because to know the book, you have to know yourself. So yes, I know your book better than, better than you lot, even though I don't read it. And my words that I'm speaking, if you have any sense, you'll see it in your book. But you don't have the... Um, how are you going to have the sense like I said? Well, you have the sense, but how are you going to access it when you are a believer? You can't. Believers cannot access these understandings because they've put themselves in a box. They allow themselves to be controlled by other human beings, not by God. It's not God who set up all um, the mosques and the churches and the synagogues. And it's not God. It's other men. And you allow these men, you know, you, God is not a man or a woman for that matter. We are here to know and understand God, not man. So you're not supposed to be following man. Ah, what man tell you? You are supposed to be following what God tell you. Yeah? And how are you going to follow that? How are you going to know what God is telling you? Simple like I tell you. When you live self-discipline, you will find out what God wants. You will know automatically. No one has to teach the baby to suck a, a breast, is it? Or to cry. You see what I mean? These things come natural. So it will come natural to you. What God wants you to do. You don't have to, you know. There's no riddle. Once you are living correctly, it comes naturally. As what, you know, what we should do. But how can you, uh, you're not going to find out what you should do naturally, like I say, when you are under the influence of some God that's a lunatic. Some God that's a, like I say, sit up in heaven. Has come to these nutters, you know. And then um, he must have a look over the overhead and think, oh yeah, they're not they're, they're behaving naughty on earth. I need to send you down there, son. Tell them this thing and work a few miracles. They're going to murder you, but don't worry. Should be great fun. <laughs> no, is that is that ready of human intelligence? Is it ready of human intelligence that for so long? You're going on about Jesus, you know, one man you claim born, that God sent on him die on the cross. It's a load of bullshit. Instead of you seriously, right, trying to find out and understand what is right and correct, true living honestly, you, you just born, like I say, lately in this century, and talking about Jesus dying on the cross for you. I even, even, even last year I seen some, the girls are only 16 and some same, same to you. you. You just come on earth. I've been here a while. And yet you are telling me how Jesus died for me. When did you get to know this? Who, who convinced you at such a young age? And now at such a young age you don't know, but you're trying to convince me that yes, it's true. But this is how mad and crazy believing can make somebody. You know what I mean? That um, you will literally, like I say, believe anything that these lunatics tell you. Because you can't know. Such a young person just coming into the world, like I say, <laughs> um, 16, 17. Is convincing somebody who lot older than them that, that Jesus did die for the sick. No man, Jesus um, that's just like I say the figment of some um, lunatical believers imagination. You know what I mean? But it's such a it's such a um, a powerful um, belief that right now up in the twenty thirteen year it's still going on and like I say I don't know how many different look how crazy it is I don't know how many different denominations of Christianity there is but I know there's a few of them anyway lots of them and all of them now is a um, is a follower of this Jesus but not in the same way in a different way 
So you literally, are you literally like I would say have three or four hundred Jesus? There must be more sects than that in Christianity. But all of these different sects see just Jesus in a different way. You know what I mean? But I, I'm saying to all of them, none of your Jesus is right. That's why you can see this one Jesus in about five thousand different ways. Because the Jesus don't exist. You know what I mean? So if something don't exist, you can, everybody can have their own Jesus, which everybody do. The Catholic have one. The um, Church of England have one. The Baptists have one. Seven day, Mormons, and, and, and so it go on, and so it go on, and they all have a different Jesus. Now, if it wasn't a different Jesus, you'd come together as one group, wouldn't you? But have you seen your Jesus? Don't tarry with that other Jesus. You know? And then you all believe that your Jesus is right. Demonstrating again the lunaticity of uh, religious people. That um, when one hears Christianity, you immediately think that, oh, you are here in one body. But when you get closer, no, you find out that within Christianity there is all the, there is the, that they're like I say, like when a glass is broken, and each fragment of the glass is claiming to be the correct, to, the, to be the full glass, when it is only a piece. But if you go to Islam, the same thing is taking place. Different variety of Muslims, not one. But you're there, Islam, but you're not one, are you? You're divided amongst yourself. You're like a broken glass, again. And each fragment think that they are the whole, when none of you are the whole. In fact, like I tell you, you are a lunatic. You lose your soul. You are all believers in God. All believers in God are lunatic. And the God that they are believing in don't exist. Well, the God that they believe in is up in heaven, like they say. Hence the fact why he's got to send messenger. Because he's out of his creation. But the God that I am dealing with don't have to send any messenger because he's in his creation. We get in touch with that God. When we need to know what's happening here, like I'm telling you, we get in touch with that God. And it will work the same just like instead of you believing in a cup, yeah, if you get to know what, what a cup is, then you will know what, what use is the cup can do. You don't believe in them. So it's the same thing with God. Don't believe in God. Because believing can't help you, is it? You are supposed to know God. What the word is. When you know that now, you will know what, what its use is for. And like I'm telling you, God is only a word. But each word we use describes something. So this word that we, 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 that, that we say God. Yeah? It literally means the intelligence that is within us. All. Better if we use the other word, conscience. When you get to know that and what its use is for, you will understand what God is and how useful it is. But if you don't know the cup, if you, if you only believe in it, then, like I say, you don't know, know that you can drink out of it because you never seen one, you just believe in one. So believing is, and knowing is two different things. You are supposed to know. If you don't know and you are believing, you don't know what you believe in. Because you never seen it. Didn't it? Could be, um, maybe it don't even exist. And I'm telling you for sure that any man who is believing in God, that God that you are believing in don't exist. Because no one is supposed to believe in God. God must be known. What is the point of God existing and hiding? Or uh, existing and he's um, all the way up in heaven. No one can get to him. But like I'm saying, it's modern time now. At least we could get the telephone number and phone God up. If he's not present. But you don't have to phone God up because God is right here. And you can get to understand this God, like I say, by living the correct way. Action. And this is what is going to make you know this one. So you don't have to believe in this one. 
And then when you know this one now, you will know for sure that uh, knowing the truth has got nothing to do with them um, going into no um, elaborate building, dressing up in any way and singing any um, special songs just to know what is right. You don't have to go through no ritual. The only ritual, yeah, you have to go through a ritual. Forgot about that. <laughs> we all have to go through a ritual. The ritual that we go through is this. In general, at first we end up on the negative way. What we have to do now is stop these negative behaviors. We have to go through that ritual. So if we was a if we was a thief, for example, we have to go through the ritual of not stealing. Stop breaking into next door neighbor's house and having a cup of tea while they're sleeping. Like I see one criminal I was reading in the paper last week. While the people was upstairs, he was downstairs, rigging the house out and um, and um, having a cup of tea and a smoke. So what I'm saying is now, if you want to know God now, you have to stop those behaviors. Negative one. If you are a liar, you work on that. Slowly. When you cut these negativity out of thyself, like I say, remove weeds from out of your garden, then new and healthy flowers will bloom. You see what I mean? And you are now going to get this understanding from the creative energy of the universe, what we are calling God, and what I term the terrible and dreadful one, Rastafari, I'm this himself the high general. I say that because I know that one. You see what I mean? So because I know that one, that's why I can tell you for a, a lot of million percent, say all outside believers are um, lunatics. Not one single, not like I say, not one single one of them popes had any sense at all. I was ever godly. From that time until this time. Yeah, you make them say, like I see now that, the, um, this last one here, they're they doing that thing, fast tracking him to sainthood, this Pope here. But look how ridiculous, like I said before, how can a man make a man a saint? If the man was a saint or a woman, well, God would have granted them that, innit? How can you stay on earth performing silly ritual until that you can appease the soul of anyone and make them into anything? You ain't the judge of nothing. So I don't know why, um, like I see this idiot Pope, I don't know what silly ritual they was doing, digging up the other one body and bringing it out in, and performing silly ritual. Say they got the making him into a saint. That's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever witnessed. That human beings could be so stupid. But no, look at the following of the Holy Father. Look at him when he come out in St. Peter to speak a load of bullshit. How many are in there? Must be half a million plus how many other million on, on um, television watching. But he ain't saying anything different from those idiots who are on the God channel. And all those other idiots around the world in their temple, church, mass, whatever they're doing. Who don't know and understand the ways of God. And have no intention, or really. the only intention is power. They are deceiving. What you don't understand, um, religious people? Your leaders are corrupted. You hear the word corruption. This word, the laws of earth are corrupted laws. Any laws that is, uh, that is set up against the law of God is corruption. So you human beings have been living under corruption. A law that is corrupted, and, and all those in it are, are corrupted, in, in, including your spiritual leaders then, if that's what you call it. All of them are corrupted to a core, because they support the corrupted system. These men of religion should be speaking out against the system. If anything, they should be the first voice to be heard. They should be, they, most priests should be in prison. Yes, then we would know that they was doing their, their um, duty as a God man. Because they would have, they would have vice out so much against the system that the system would have executed some and a lot of priests would be in prison 
for what they say from the heart because they know it's right. But how many priests, how many are you? Like, not a lot of priests in prison because you're not speaking the truth. You're not implied for that. You are implied to them keep the minds of other human beings dumb down. And just like I'm telling you, if you go to Saudi Arabia, which one of the Imam down there, of God Imam, yeah? He's, got, he's saying anything that the, the king is a goddamn devil. No, he's not saying that. He's a coward. If the king will lock him up in jail. <laughs> the, 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 if there was any brave Imam in Saudi Arabia, they are in prison. The rest that are down there in the holy land, like I claim, is devils. The one who is intending just like the king to rob him and make money. You know? Interesting in anything bad. These are some of the most vile and wicked soul I say that were on planet Earth. Some of the most evil men that were on planet Earth are, are hiding in religion. Vile and sick beings with their belief and, and, and well obviously the God that they claim. No God don't um, exist that that they're talking about like that, you know what I mean? I devil for that matter. They talk about, they talk about the devil. They're so terrified of the, in fact, they put it, they blame the devil for the wickedness that they do. And I am a friend of the devil. Know that the, the devil don't take part in physical life, carrying out no physical action. And yet these, um, these crazy people are terrified of this one putting hands on this one and saying that this one want to lead people um, down to hell because this one and God had an argument up in heaven and God threw this one out of heaven. But God would have to throw this one out of heaven if he live up there, isn't he? Up, up wherever heaven is. And down here was a separate place, isn't it? Oh, no, 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 no. You can forget about this one about God showing um, the devil out of heaven. And forget about the idea of the devil possessing any human. The devil don't need to um, possess any human. The devil already in all humans, isn't it? Take up residence. Eh? So why would the devil not want to possess anyone? And why would the devil want to be, um, like I say, looking any recruits? How could the devil look recruit if you are here to make a choice? And the choice is not with the devil. Uh, the devil that you imagine. No choice is with no devil. The choice is with you. So if the choice is with you and it's only up to you to decide, how can the devil be looking to recruit you? For what? The devil is not interested in your wickedness. Whatever you choose to do, that's what you, yourself as a soul, want to do. If you imagine, I don't know if you ever met the devil. You have so much um, Satan worshipper. I don't know if they ever met Satan anyway. Ah, this is just another one of their wild imagination that they believe, they believe something but they don't know. So here again you have them believe in Satan, but they don't know Satan. And that is the difference. I know the devil. They just believe in the devil, so whatever they believe now is always some wild, mad, crazy thing, you know what I mean? Because they don't know when you are supposed to know. You are supposed to know the positive, overstand the positive and the negative. You see what I mean? So what you are calling, what they are calling the devil and ranting and going on about, it's only the negative part of our own being, which every being is like that, isn't it? We are all positive and negative. And we are supposed to balance these two forces because they run the universe anyway, positive and negative. And like I say, produce a light. When you do that, you are able to see. Where you get the negative to be Satan and, you know, just because within the psyche of man then, on this level, the, the negative is um, the temper then, who might suggest negative ideas to the being. But you don't have to do these negative ideas anyway. Just because you are receiving negative thoughts, you don't have to follow them. And if you don't follow them up, 
The negative stars cannot force you to do anything, can they? So let's just imagine that the negative thoughts is coming from Satan. Satan is the one that is giving you negative thoughts, telling you to do this and do that. Or, or, it's, or it's coming through somebody else to you who has fallen for these negative ways. And this other person who is telling you these negative ways. You don't have to believe them or follow them or vote for them. Just because Mr. Obama come telling you a load of bullshit, you don't have to vote for him. You see what I mean? You don't have to believe anything that um, negative people tell you. But so, maybe you can't recognize the devil. Uh, maybe some people just can tell temptation in themselves. They, maybe they can't recognize it when it's working. There is other beings who have fallen for this negativity in themselves. Yeah, and they will walk around and try to recruit other people in it. So if you don't know yourself, of course when religious people come, you are going to follow them are political people and believe in these political people that they can... Not realizing that, like they say, I bet my soul they are all wicked. That's how serious it is. You are here, right? All of you human on the planet now, believing in these religious people and politi political people, well, I am betting my soul on it that all of these people that you are putting your trust in to guide you and to make life better are wicked beings disguised as good beings. That's why the world is like it is. All these smiling politicians, these great senators in America, they are the one behind all the drone killing. They are the one behind uh, all the, uh, the, the massive military might that America's got. And they are the one who want this military might to go around the world and behave like a policeman because they are a cowboy, killing who they want randomly anywhere. And these souls are the ones who are responsible. And these are the people that you are looking up to because you see them on your television. Well, these people are going to pay for every single thing that they do as well. You know what I mean? These powerful beings that are doing this against their fellow human beings, there's a law. And all those who support them, like when you're here and you're glad to rub shoulder with the powerful, in it, like you meet Obama or the Queen or whatever, you're so proud. Be proud of meeting them on the next side as well when they are receiving what's due to them. Because like I'm telling you, there's a law within this universe. And you are supposed to know this law. Failure to do so is of no importance. You know, okay? Anyhow you come here and you act against the law, consequences to action, you must pay for your action, all your deeds. You understand what I mean? So these people, whoever you are, wherever you are, breaking the natural law, and care, not caring, I don't understand it. You are going to pay for that. So if you think your life is to come here and admire these lunatics like I'm telling you in society, be they religious people, political people, uh, entertainment people, you know, these kind of idiots, you go ahead and waste all your energies, right, admiring or, ch or making the wrong choice because Life is eternal. You are the one who is going to pay for it. You are the one who is proud to meet all these top devils when calling when they're in government. You're so proud to get an award of them. Well, you'll be proud to meet them or to live with them on the other side as well. Because like I'm saying, these are the evil on the planet. Every single government and, and here are religious institutions are ungodly and has lived against the law of God and has created their own idiotic law to use and abuse and I'm saying now every man have to pay for his actions so if a man want to in this time eh, follow these lunatics you will have to pay this is a time when you can pull back know yourself save yourself and your family your children educate your children into a different way of thinking Get to know who you are. Get your mind fit. Get out of your box. Get to know the oneness of life. 
Like I'm saying, but you're not going to know the one is if you are not willing to self-discipline. Self-discipline is what's going to wake one up. Being honest and truthful to thyself. Now you don't need to be honest. To yourself. Be honest and truthful to yourself. If you want to know. Why wouldn't anyone want to know anyway? Living forever, Rasta. Like I say, why live in a rare way you can know or you can believe? Why not know? What's wrong with knowing? And you can't know if you're a believer. If you believe in the Prophet Muhammad or Jesus or any other prophet you believe in that, believe in your Quran, your Bible, you can't know, can you? Because all you'll be doing then you have to repeat what your Bible says, what your Quran says, what your prophet says, what Jesus says, what disciples say, what, and you forever read, 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 read that. Now such a mind cannot know. It don't even want to know. Because it don't want to accept the fact that the creative energy, God, Allah, whatever you want to call the one. You know, I love to call the one. Rastafari, terrible and dreadful over that. You cannot accept that this one created you then, this energy, and give you your own intelligence, and no one should use it but you. No, you are afraid, you are a coward. So you only satisfy if there's, um, like I say, a million people together. Then you can boast and say, oh, in my religion there's a billion people. That can't help you. It could be, a, it could be three trillion of you in there. What difference does that make? That's just show, that, that all it means when there's a million of you. That is so goddamn stupid and weak. On the outward side, you, you, you have strength. Because God is a billion of you, you have more financial power. I'm more physical power. But mentally, you are weak and dead. One man could outthink you all, because you cannot think for yourself. You, are, you follow the, um, what I call, um, you follow like herd, like you've got sheepish mentality. But I'm saying that's shameful because you, no one was created with sheepish mentality. Everyone has got their own faculties, their own mind, their own understanding within them. If you want to call it that. The one is in all in it, so we can all join this one. So why are we not doing it? The reason why we're not doing it is because we're goddamn selfish. You see what I mean? Whether we high up or we low down. Wickedness is in high places and low places. So even right around us here, you have people who are dishonest, cheating and over nothing. You know? So they might not be doing the big evil that those up there giving the others to shoot, uh, fire the drone or whatever. They're not in a position to do that. But in the position that they are, they still dislike one another and hate and jealousy and spy. So they too are blind. So the human is blind in the high position and the low position, if you know what I mean. So I don't only come to fight an evil in high places, in low places as well. Anywhere I find it. And uh, you don't have to look hard on the planet to find it. I'm saying it's contaminated up. Only thing that these evil beings are well dressed. And they've got most of the metal out there. So you know what I mean? Them, they, they dress themselves up in these metal and they appear good. But looks is deceiving. The better you look at this planet, the more goddamn stupid you are, I say. Yeah. Better you look. Those who have to um, here brush them their photographs and um, doll up themselves, see the plastic surgery, the makeup artist. The more you're doing that, the more goddamn stupid you are. That's what I say. Those who are the most beautiful are the most backward and stupid people on the planet. Yet at the same time, they, they appear to be the most sophisticated. You see, because they are well respected by other lunatics and they are always in the paper and the news and the television. Yet, yeah, you've been promoted not by those who are godly and honest. You are being promoted by those who are devious and wicked. 
those who like to use other human beings like yourself to keep their fellow human being down. You know what I mean? So of course they're going to, if they know that you're a goddamn fool, they, can, they will use you. But they weren't going to use any, any being who has got the senses together. You understand what I mean? They use people who are fans. That's what the system, how the system like, I'm watching them. Uh, when Obama was getting his thing, Beyonce was there. And then they, they had their, their football final. She was there singing as well. Singing what? So everything Beyonce is representing. But what is she representing? And what is she singing about? A, lo a load of stupidness. And who is she singing to? A load of goddamn buffoon like herself. Well, she's acting like one. When I say she's a buffoon, she's acting like one. Because no one was created a buffoon. But we can all a buffoon. And it's such a young girl now, they've turned her into a buffoon. A slave for the system. And she loves it so much. Because always on television, always pop, always you get invited to the president inauguration, you get invited to Super Bowl, everywhere. So you sell your soul for this. I can't even say you're a young girl now. Cause you are in your girl must be in her 30s now. I come to my senses at 27. So I know I, I am not in a, in a, a mood to... Um, Tolerate anyone being stupid after 27. <laughs> yeah, before that, you can allow that. But after you go through 27, you are responsible. So this girl now is responsible. And but what is she doing with her life, given to her by the creative energy? Half dressing herself and going on sexy. And um, singing songs that keep, that me make absolutely no sense. To the psyche of human beings. Why? Simply because she's been paid millions. You know what I mean? And they can use millions and buy a baby cat for 300 grand and all them kind of a ridiculous, you know? Go on like how souls go on when they, when they lose the soul completely. But what I'm saying, you know, you're going, are you beings who are behaving like this against the law of the terrible and dreadful God? You will pay for this ignorance. Oh yeah, enjoy the party now which you do because you have enough money and you love partying. And the yachts and you know, big crews and club. The other day I was reading in the paper here yeah, and her dad is a billionaire. She come out and 30 grand she spend on the bar. Which is a regular thing for them, 50 grand, 30 grand. But you make sure you spend a lot on what you, you, your entertainment. Enjoy it before old age, come or you die before old age. But enjoy, enjoy the stupidity. Enjoy breaking the law of God and not, don't even consider the consequences. Just think of all the sex and party that you have in. And all the big stars that you meet from the movie industry, football world, actor world. Yeah? And occasionally the political big wigs that you meet and no doubt you might even have a chance to get introduced to one of the highest devil on the planet the Pope himself and kiss the devil on yeah that's a real devil a devil disciple on, yeah? and you're wallowing all this and enjoy yourself man well you enjoy all that you know cause I'm telling you death is coming oh yes you can never forget about that one. I wish they all these wicked men on the planet, you know. You know, they're trying their best for, to find something that will let them live. Not only live longer, but so they can um, stay young as well. But trust me, no matter what you do, that is coming for you. And that is when you are going to pay for what you do. You who the army is protecting now, you know, are the police, you know. Are you big and rich and powerful devils who are hiding behind these force and have these force protecting you? And are these force that are protecting you in their ignorance? All them have to pay for what they do here. You know, you know the amount of people they have to kill? Are the police? 
to protect these rich and wicked evil human beings. And what they do to people, the amount of people they torture, terrorize, brutalize. May they are raped. Oh, yeah, I said, enough things these military forces do to protect the rich and the powerful. While they're claiming that they, um, it's, it's, it's in national interest. The CIA is one of the, the CIA was a man. The Brethren is one of the biggest murderers on the planet. Fly about and kill at random. Because Americans are killers. They love to kill the cowboys. They nearly decimate the Indians when they first reach there. Never mind. You know what I mean? They are fur they have never stopped they are the only nation I know to drop two atomic bomb on one country. Not on, a, not, not on the battlefield but on civilians. So these people love blood. And yet you have them, them say the CIA all the people in the CIA is going to hell because they are professional killers of their fellow human beings. Like those in the Mossad are those type of killers. Anywhere the killers are, you could be on left side, right side, any side you are a killer. And you spend your life making a career out of killing and going against the will of God. And you think you was defending your country, or your nation, and we, we, we. You should have been defending the planet Earth. You let some other satanic being tell you that you was doing these things to protect your country. Your country. There is no, you see what I mean, it, is, it was wicked and deceivious beings that separate up the planet and put it into countries. No countries exist. If you live in that mentality, you are the fool. So yes, you go about the earth and train. Got in the now, we are in the Swedish army and the Brazilian army and all these army, Jamaican army, man. Train like a soldier to defend, eh? And shoot and kill and do whatever you're doing in this army. That's what you was born for. That's what God give you a life for, yeah? To, to come here and go in army, armies and police and beat on your fellow human being. Fire shot off them, yeah? Do everything you can to protect those who are rich and powerful. Yeah? And you let them tell you that you are defending your country. Well, when you reach on the other side, you shall reap your reward for this, you know? All of you who are firing the drones, who can see you? And you are well protected by your wicked and uh, evil supply, you know. But when they come for you, they won't be able to protect you. And, and uh, your memory know that you was the one who fired the drone. The day that you fired it, how many times your finger squeezed the trigger. Because there is no secret in this universe. Not from the one. There is secrets. But, yeah, and, but what I'm saying, men cannot keep secret from the one. The one knows everything. So I want to know how any human could have ever, whether in this time, that time, or the time to come, come on this planet and do any crime and get away with it. You can't. The law is watertight. The full weight of the law shall be coming down on these evil souls. Just like how they like to say, that they say the full weight of the law. When they, mean, they, they, they put the full weight of the law on you, International or whatever, lock you up for they don't know, don't know when. But they are, they are going to receive the full weight of the law as well. Whether they want to be police, soldier, judge, barrister, liars. I like to call the liar them liars. Any one of them working in this evil and corrupted system. All of you will be judged for what you do. Remember the amount of money that you were spared to carry out these atrocities against your fellow human being. Did you think about them when you was getting paid? You never care about their fear, sentence them to whatever years or whatever, whatever you do to them. You and your evil, your system is not a just system. So how could a just system judgment fear it? It can't. You see what I mean? Because the judges are vile and wicked men themselves. Who oh, lot of them probably miss the exploiters of the earth. They are not normal human beings. They are taking part in a system that they know in their heart is not just and correct. 
They've been paid, they've compromised their dignity as being to serve an unjust system. Bet me so on it, man. That a man like the Pope and all the Archbishop of England, all of them comprom compromise the truth to serve and a wicked system. You serve the devil, I say. Because you're not serving positivity. You, know? you serve negativity. You've compromised. You've been bought. You humans are so easy to buy. Ask somebody have to offer you a hundred thousand. You do anything. You sell your soul. You sell your neighbor. You know what I mean? So are you... Um, Really just people as a political people. All of God, all of them is like a cesspool of a firm evil. Beings who have sold the soul and are willing to lie to the brother or kill them. Willing to preach to them what they do not know. What they believe in. And no, none of them is brave enough to tell the people that, listen, we are not sure about what we are talking here enough. It's so we are in this the dark just like you. We, we we only believe it. We're not sure if anything go like that. Well they are not brave enough to do it, but I am. Nothing goes like that. You understand? There is no God outside of the creation. God is here, there and everywhere. If you don't know this, that means you don't know God. And these people who are teaching that God said his disciple don't know this, so that means they don't know God. So I am willing to bet my soul that the whole goddamn lot of them is, are devils. And the all religious men who are believing in God are blind and ignorant. And the reason why they're blind and ignorant is because they do not live good. They have no intention of doing so. They are deceptive beings. Anyway, I hope I bring you closer, like I say, in this reason. You now shed a bit more light on these... Um, but we start to have the reason and these different gods. Gods like some gods saying, let us make man. That means there's more than one god. And then I read in the Quran that we saying we. We, that means there's more than one as well. So you need to establish how many gods there is. You see what I mean? And then like I'm saying, you need to find out, right, what's the name, of, which god is up in heaven. The, the, the one that is up in heaven, the God that is up in heaven, he is the one who is sending the prophets and the saints. Because he is not hearing his creation. And I'm telling you, such a God, he is on trial here. Because he can't be real if he is up in heaven. Because the real one is here. So the one up in the heaven is a false God. I bet my soul that he is a false God. He must be the one that sent Jesus, that false God. He is false, Jesus is false. And he sent him. And, and the one that um, tell the Jew that he was chosen as well. That God is false. And all the prophets of the Jews are false as well. Because if his God was false, that means all his prophets must be false. You see what I mean? And anybody who is following his prophet, they are following idiocity. So that means Christianity get touched and Islam get touched. Because you are all following the Jewish man's stupidity. You know what I mean? About it. I'm saying Abraham never exists. Go and ask Jewish archaeologists. They will tell you themselves. The brethren will dig here, they will dig the whole of Israel, never find Abraham. Never find Joseph, never find Moses, never find Jesus. Don't never find their brother, sister, mother, uncle, auntie. Can't find no trace of them. It looks as if these people must have existed just like how Harry Potter do. In the imagination of the writer. Anyway, I am not here to convince you of such matters. I am only here to burn fire. So I say I burn out all those guys and I burn all those who follow such idiocity. Anyway, I and I have been rapping for a while in the fire. You see? So I ain't now going to um, withdraw from this fire and go and burn as plebs. Eh, Rastafari, I live it and read it in, in the heart of all human beings. Feed in and fire out. <laughs>